Welcome back to our YouTube channel. In this video, we're gonna be showing you how we pour a public sidewalk area in the city of Portland. And I encourage you to stay until the end so that way you can see a step-by-step -step process of how we do the whole thing. The nice thing about this project is since it's a public sidewalk, we can actually pour straight from the concrete supplier's truck. And right here, we're already getting, you know, to one of the ends. This is about 35 lineal feet of uh, six foot wide sidewalk. And uh, we have a little screep board right there. So that's that little piece of wood that you see that we use as a screep. And, um, I have, you know, my worker, Jose, right there. He's pulling the, the concrete. He's kind of dragging that street board from, from one uh, end to the other end. He's using the forms, the existing forms that are on each side as a guide, you know. So he, he basically pulls the, the concrete. If he sees any areas that are low, he kind of puts some concrete there. If he sees that it's a little high, he kind of drags it back and we just pull it out. So then after we do that, we start running our bull float. That's what you see right here on that long metal pole. So this is our four foot wide um, bull float. And we usually do this right after we pour. So that way we can start uh, working the surface. And again, you know, this is how it looks. After we ran the bull float a few times, you see that texture there. The concrete's still uh, pretty fresh very moist you know um especially since it was just poured a few minutes ago or several minutes ago and uh, another thing that we do right away is we run our edgers so that's what you see right here uh, we're running our edger tool all along the forms that's what you see right there and uh that helps us give like a nice edge all along so we just give it a pass, you know, just back and forth. And then over here, we're continuing to use the bull float. This is on the other end that we recently poured as well. So we make sure that this goes over all of the surface areas. So everything is, is getting applied uniform. And in this little walkway section, we have one of our workers right here just... Um, working it with the um, hand float and as you can tell right there i mean there's some areas that they have to fill in the concrete and everything so once he has it all uh gives it a pass with that then he also runs a edger tool so we run our edger tool the nice thing about this you know you can adjust it uh we can use it with the pole or we can also remove it and use it just by hand uh wh whatever's needed so and, and it's very important, you know, we got to run that edger tool along all of the edges. So here where the form is, where the existing concrete is. And then another thing that we also do is we run our Fresno tool. That's what you see there on the left. The uh, One of our workers is using the Fresno tool. And uh, the edger tool right there. So we're also... You know, sometimes when we run into obstacles, like in this case, we have a, a little fence and different things. So we just try to work around it as best as we can. And there's that Fresno tool, a little better view of that. So we just pass that throughout all of the concrete after we went with it with the um, bull float. So this Fresno tool, you know, it kind of seals the concrete and... Um, just make sure that all of you know all of the surface it's just nice and um smooth smoothened out so and then one other thing that we do uh right away is we start making our joints so that's what you see this tool doing right there on the left uh we're, we're creating a joint from one of the corners to the other corner now this right here that that is to help control the cracks because as the concrete dries, you know, it's going to crack. 
uh, over time. So we have these tool joints um, that helps us create like a nice deep joint. So it basically, uh, it's, it causes like a, like a weak spot in the concrete. So whenever the concrete does, you know, expand and move or whatever, it's going to crack in those areas. And right here, we're running some string lines from one end all the way to the other. This is to create the, uh, the joint that we're going to have running all the length of the sidewalk. As you can tell right here, you know, it's kind of at an angle. So we had to run two string lines so that way we can follow the, um, the same uh, joint from the existing sidewalk. Uh, one is going to go at, a, at an angle and then the other one's going to go straight. And so we do that so that way we have a, a very easy to follow guide. Um, and then, you know, we have our, um, our joint tool right there that we just follow those string lines that we mark the concrete with. And, uh, so that's kind of the process right there. He puts it in, into the concrete and then it only goes into it a little bit, you know, and, uh, from there he just goes back and forth, making sure that he gets a nice defined joint throughout all the area and there you can kind of see how the angle is being created there so you see that's how it ends up looking right there from this point it kind of angles out towards the right and, and there we're matching the existing um sidewalk and uh, and then it just goes from there and then it will go straight so Another thing that we're doing right here is we're starting to measure the cross joints because the city of Portland, they require us to have like about three foot by three foot squares. Uh, in this case, you know, the sidewalk isn't perfectly, um, it's not going to be perfect like three foot by three foot squares. We just have to measure it from one end to the other in, in, the, in the sections. Like in this case right here, uh, this area. We're just measuring it and and we're going to have the squares kind of equal out, you know, throughout the area. So um, we're just getting our measurements there from that end point to the other. And then we basically mark the concrete like you're going to see right here. He marks it with the tip of the tape measure and then that will give us a reference. So then we, you know, we run our, um, our, our tool joint and we just make our cross joints. Uh, at the very end, you see we already made uh, several of them over there on the other side. And right here, we're starting to make them on, on this end. And so you basically start from one point. You know, you put it in there into the into the concrete. And then you just kind of glide it back and forth. So that way you get a nice, defined tool joint. And then right here, we're just giving it a pass over one more time with our Fresno tool. This just smoothens out all the concrete, gets it ready. And then we're just going to wait um, maybe 30, 45 minutes or a little while. Let the concrete dry. And then we're going to work it a little bit some more. At this point, we already waited about a good 30, 45 minutes. And you can tell the concrete is already looking a little different. Some of the areas look more dry than before. And we're going ahead and running the edger tool on all of the along the forms so we're gonna run that one more time all over the place and then we're gonna start working the surfaces with our Fresno and then with our hand float and we're just making sure that the surface is just nice and smooth throughout the entire area especially after we're running those edger tools and everything so it causes like little marks around the edges and on the surface area so this helps us smoothen everything out and just you know taking care of any details that need to be taken care of so we're gonna do this process a few times we're gonna you know pass all of the tools every, every the whole process we're gonna do it um, you know a few different times until we can get a nice consistency and that way it'll be ready to apply the broom finish
this is some of the final passovers that we're going on the concrete surface. We have the knee pads right there that come in very handy. You can see that they put them right there close to the edge and then that allows them to get in all the way to the other edge of the concrete. So that way they can work everything with their hand tools. And so right here, we're just very, very careful. You can tell right here um, with, the, with the tool on, on the very top, just only working the surface part of it, especially since we already have all the tool joints and the uh, edger um, already where it needs to be. And at this point, it's pretty much ready to go. So now we can start brooming. One thing, we like to broom all of the joint areas so that way you get the, the broom finish consistent all the way through, including those joints. So you just basically, uh, you know, bring the, the you have the, the broom from one end and then you just drag it across um, gently, you know, so that way you get that nice texture on the top. You can tell, um, you can see the color change in the concrete. On the left squares, those those are the ones that we just applied the broom finish. And then these ones are right here. Um, you can tell how the, the surface changes with the texture and all of that. So comes out really nice. And uh, that's pretty much the process from start to finish. In this case, we're doing some work for one of our customers that is in the city of Portland, Oregon. And... Uh, they have a, you know, it's a really beautiful city, really nice place, but with all the trees everywhere, you know, the root system and all that, it, it impacts the concrete and it causes a lot of tripping hazards. So that's why we had to do this job right here. The nice thing is after all of this work right here, they're going to have, um, you know, hopefully many years, this will last them before they have to ever do it again. So that's uh, the final product right here. This lower part, this we already did all the broom finish. That area up there, you know, we're just waiting for it to dry a little bit more so we can continue the same process. And ultimately, it's all going to look like this right here. We hope you like this video. We look forward to seeing you on the next one. May God bless you and take care.